Hello YouTube, this is Magnolia Mo and you are watching my channel. In today's video, I'll be doing my very first, my very first 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray disc review. The movie is Bullet Train. The movie is presented in Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos on uh, this particular disc. I will not only be providing my overall impressions about the audio, video, and some technical specifications, but also my, uh, my impressions of what did I think about this movie. Bullet Train is about five assassins on a fast-moving bullet train uh, in Tokyo, Japan, uh, who find out very quickly that their missions have uh, a lot more in common. The movie has, obviously, it's led by Brad Pitt, uh, Sandra Bullock is in it a little bit uh, for a bit um, and then it has Aaron, Aaron Taylor Johnson, um, <clears throat> Brian Tyrese Henry, uh, Hiroyuko uh, Sanada and, uh, and Michael Shannon um, along a host of other characters um, and, uh, and some cameos, some famous actors doing their cameos. As you know the movie is directed by David Leach. Um, he is, is a famous uh, actor, stuntman, stunt double uh, for Brad Pitt, um, for instance, um, producer and director. So he directed, uh, he has also directed Deadpool 2, uh, Fast and the Furious uh, franchise, Hobbs and Shaw, and um, Ke uh, Keanu Reeves in, uh, he was a co-director uh, for John Wick, the first one, uh, starring Keanu Reeves, right? So you all know about that movie but uh, uh, he, so he's well known and he's he's gotten uh, you know some good movies under under his uh, 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 you know under his belt you know from a directorial perspective uh, he's produced some really good movies as well and now for some technical specifications about the movie Here is the HDR10 metadata from my Panasonic 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray player, uh, UB820. Uh, maximum light level is 1038 nits, maximum frame average light level is 395 nits. So not too overly bright, uh, but it is perfect. So what did I think about the uh, overall Atmos presentation on this disc? Uh, so Adobe Atmos, you know, as everybody knows, is object based, right? Um, the, I wouldn't consider this movie to be, uh, uh, you know, heavy uh, as far as overhead effects is concerned. I mean, as, as a matter of fact, oh, it's pretty light on overhead effects. From Adobe Atmos presentation perspective, you know, I, I think they, the, the use of overhead uh, was, was limited to ambient sounds, right? So meaning uh, if Brad Pitt is in a train station you know you can hear you know the announce the announcements going on um, you know in in a in a train station like you know you hear them from above right uh, the the spatial cues right in in specific scenes um, and, and nothing else no, but but really you're focused on 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 the action that's going on uh, you know in in the movie so so to me the Adobe Atmos you know DTSX those are all good technologies, right? But you have to use them correctly, right? So in this movie, I think they used them to the best that they could because really uh, the overall presentation or, or what was going on on screen didn't lend itself uh, to, you know, to have overly, you know, aggressive uh, overhead, um, you know, effects, right? Going on in the, in the particular movie. So what I mean by that is in scene one, um, when Brad Pitt is, um, you know, at the train station, all, all you hear from above is the ambient sounds, right? It's, it's mostly atmospheric, uh, you know, just to enhance the ambience. Scene four, um, 25 uh, uh, minute, 45 second mark, 25 minute, 50 second mark. Uh, scene five, um, you know, 31 minutes and uh, 34 second mark where uh, at our, I believe it was our second train stop. Um, uh, you know, there's just, a, there's an announcement going on and you can hear it above, uh, you know, in, in your overhead channels. Nothing, nothing too extravagant, right? Because the director wants you to focus on what's going on 
in the movie it is a, a dialogue driven movie at the end of the day so with with great action to, to be honest with you but but uh, but light on overhead effect so even in the crazy action scenes right uh, for instance when the lady when ladybug and tangerine um, uh, are hanging uh, out of the train uh, in one of the scenes right it's uh, scene eight 58 uh, minute 37 second mark uh, the the only overhead activity you hear i mean that's a heavy uh, action scene you would expect something but the only overhead activity you hear is when the door pops out of the the train and goes buzzing flying over you that's what i mean i mean it's more natural so so no, nothing pushed heavily on you right uh, from uh, from an aggressive atmos uh, uh, overhead activity per perspective but the objects there's plenty of object movement but it is all in your bed channels and then finally uh, the the use of the overhead speakers um, is is really to enhance uh, the overall soundtrack so there is music actually playing in your overhead uh, speakers uh, so so for for overall uh, audio uh, for this particular movie because of the reasons that I just outlined uh, you know, this is it is a Dolby Atmos track, so you would expect uh, you know objects moving around more frequent than not, right? Um, and and good use of your overhead speakers. So so for that reason, because it wasn't over overly used, right? Uh, your overhead speakers, I am going to have to go with a seven. Um, now, if you compare that to the DTS track track that's on the the regular blue Blu-ray disc. Um, uh, on, on this particular package, right? It, it, that, if you just take the DTS track for what it's worth, channel-based audio, it is in it is a nine out of ten, right? In my opinion, because really they maximized it to its the uh, uh, you know to its capabilities. I mean, they're both Atmos and DTS have plenty of low bass, nothing infra infrastronic, right? Uh, uh, where where the walls are shaking, but enough enough of deep bass to keep you happy. For video, I'm going to go with a nine out of ten, um, only because it is. I mean, the the, the transfer is is exquisite. Um, it is you don't see any softening except for a couple of scenes where it's done on purpose. But overall, the colors are are vibrant. The colors are actually awesome. Like in this movie, the 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 use of uh, uh, HDR obviously uh, is really good, but and there's plenty of shadow detail, good solid shadow detail throughout the movie. Um, there is also the uh, your specular highlights in in uh, some of the scenes towards the end of the movie. Towards actually the second half of the movie, when um, uh, when when essentially the the sun is coming up, uh, and uh, and there are scenes you know where there's sun behind our our actors and and you actually see the dynamic range in those scenes um, and I, and I'll put some you know pictures of those scenes in this video uh, so that you can see what I'm so that you can see what I'm talking about so the specular highlights specular highlights are there um, use of HDR is great and that's why I'm gonna go with a nine out of ten uh, for the video So what do I think about this movie, right? So, so from my perspective, what does Magnolia Mo think about this movie, right? Because everybody who knows me knows I watch movies for uh, audio and for video, right? So I I was very happy from a video standpoint, and I'm and I and I was very happy from an audio standpoint as well because I like the soundtrack, not the music, but the soundtrack. There's Japanese versions of I Need a Hero and um, uh, um, the uh, the song uh, "Staying Staying Alive." Uh, I mean, those are great, uh, you know, you know, versions of uh, Japanese versions of 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 uh, uh, the English songs, right? So, so that the soundtrack is again is great. Um, the action is 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 good. The dialogue is gritty and it's funny, um, and it kept me engaged throughout the movie. Um, I love the the you know. I mean, it's 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 pretty straightforward. I mean, it's not a very tricky. 
uh, or very complicated uh, plot to the movie, uh, but you're following it, uh, you know, along, and and you're you're getting a few good laughs throughout the movie, uh, and uh, yeah, so it's it's worth watching. It has the rewatchability factor. It is definitely something that that if uh, some of my friends came over and and wanted to demo a scene or two, I would definitely demo. I would demo the last scene, I, I believe, scene 15. Uh, and then maybe uh, uh, you know a few uh, other action scenes, uh, uh, you know, during the movie. But mainly, mainly the last scene, I would demo that. Um, <clears throat> you know, the last shot uh, of of the train train wreck um, it was an awesome scene. Uh, so it's demo worthy. Not that you're gonna blow away anybody, you know, with the overhead uh, surround activity or, or there's plenty of surround activity. On the bed channels but but you're not going to blow anybody away with or you know with your height effects but nevertheless it's a demo worthy disc uh, from a video standpoint from an audio standpoint yes there are other movies that you can demo but if you want to showcase your your display this is one of those movies that you should definitely get so there you have it i hope you guys enjoyed my very first uh movie review uh 4k ultra hd disc um and and it was for bullet train so look forward to to uh, other videos such as this, um, you know, and if you like uh, this content that, that I'm posting, please don't don't forget to subscribe, um, share and like. Thank you.